a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Iridium Satellite Constellation The Iridium Satellite Constellation provides voice and data coverage to satellite phones, pagers and integrated transceivers over the entire Earth's surface. Iridium Communications owns and operates the constellation, additionally selling equipment and access to its services. It was originally conceived by Barry Bertiger, Raymond J. Leopold and Ken Peterson in late 1987 and then developed by Motorola on a fixed-price contract from July 29, 1993 to November 1, 1998. When the system became operational and commercially available, the constellation consists of 66 active satellites in orbit, required for global coverage, and additional spare satellites, to serve in case of failure. Satellites are in low Earth orbit at a height of approximately 485 miles and inclination of 86.4 degrees. Orbital velocity of the satellites is approximately 17,000 miles per hour. Satellites communicate with neighboring satellites via inter-satellite links. Each satellite can have four inter-satellite links, one each to neighbors fore and aft in the same orbital plane, and one each to satellites in neighboring planes to either side. The satellites orbit from pole to same pole with an orbital period of roughly 100 minutes. This design means that there is excellent satellite visibility and service coverage especially at the north and south poles. The over-the-pole orbital design produces seams where satellites encounter rotating planes next to one another are traveling in opposite directions. Cross-seam inter-satellite link handoffs would have to happen very rapidly and cope with large Doppler shifts. Therefore, Iridium supports inter-satellite links only between satellites orbiting in the same direction. The constellation of 66 active satellites has six orbital planes spaced 30 degrees apart, with 11 satellites in each plane. The original concept was to have 77 satellites, which is where the name Iridium came from, being the element with the atomic number 77, and the satellites evoking the BOA model image of electrons orbiting around the Earth as its nucleus. This reduced set of six planes is sufficient to cover the entire Earth's surface at every moment. Because of the shape of the Iridium satellite's reflective antennas, the satellites focus sunlight on a small area of the Earth's surface in an incidental manner. This results in an effect called Iridium flares, where the satellite momentarily appears as one of the brightest objects in the night sky and can be seen even during daylight. History the Iridium satellite constellation was conceived in the early 1990s, as a way to reach high Earth latitudes with reliable satellite communication services. Early calculations showed that 77 satellites would be needed, hence the name Iridium after the metal with atomic number 77. It turned out that just 66 were required to complete the blanket coverage of the planet with communication services. The first generation constellation was developed by Iridium SSC and financed by Motorola. The satellites were deployed in 1997-2002. A drawback of Iridium's concept was that the constellation required all of its satellites to be in orbit before commercial service could begin resulting in high initial outlay. Iridium SSC employed a globally diverse fleet of rockets to get their 77 satellites into orbit, including launch vehicles, from the United States, Russia, and China. 55 were launched to orbit on 12 Delta II LVs carrying 5 satellites each, 21 on 3 Proton KDM-2 LVs, with 7 each, 4 on 2 Rakot slash Briz KM LVs carrying 2 each, and 12 on 6 Chang's N2C slash SD LVs carrying 2 each. The total setup cost for the first generation fleet was approximately. The first test telephone call was made over the network in 1998 and full global coverage was complete by 2002. However, although the system met its technical requirements, it was not a success in the market. Insufficient market demand existed for the product at the price points on offer from Iridium as set by its parent company Motorola. The company failed to earn revenue sufficient to service the debt associated with building out the constellation and Iridium went bankrupt, the largest bankruptcy in US history at the time. 
The constellation continued following the bankruptcy of the original Iridium Corporation. A new entity emerged to operate the satellites and developed a different product placement and pricing strategy, offering communication services to a niche market of customers who required reliable services of this type in areas of the planet not covered by traditional geosynchronous orbit communication satellite services. Users include journalists, explorers, and military units. No new satellites were launched 2002-2017 to replenish the constellation. Even though the original satellites based on the LM700A model had been projected to have a design life of only eight years. Second Generation The second generation Iridium Next satellites began to be deployed into the existing constellation in January 2017. Iridium Communications, the successor company to Iridium SSC, has ordered a total of 81 new satellites being built by Thales Alenia Space and Orbital ATK, which includes a number of ground spares. The redesign of the constellation reduces the minimum number of satellites for global coverage to 66, from 77 in the first generation constellation. In August 2008, Iridium selected two companies, Lockheed Martin, and Thales Alenia Space, to participate in the final phase of the procurement of the next generation satellite constellation. The original plan had been to begin launching new satellites in 2014. The design was complete by 2010, and Iridium stated that the existing constellation of satellites would remain operational until Iridium Next is fully operational, with many satellites expected to remain in service until the 2020s while the next satellites would have improved bandwidth. The new system was to be backward compatible with the current system. In June 2010, the winner of the contract was announced as Thales Alenia Space, in a $2.1 billion deal underwritten by Compagnie Française d'Assurance pour le Commerce Exterieur. Iridium additionally stated that it expected to spend about $800 million to launch the satellites and upgrade some ground facilities. In March 2018 SpaceX launched 10 satellites as part of their Falcon 9 rocket launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This brought Iridium's number of upgraded satellites to 50. Original Iridium Constellation the satellites each contain seven Motorola slash Freescale PowerPC 603E processors running at roughly 200 MHz, connected by a custom backplane network. One processor is dedicated to each cross-link antenna, and two processors are dedicated to satellite control, one being a spare. Late in the project an extra processor was added to perform resource management and phone call processing. The cellular lookdown antenna has 48 spot beams arranged as 16 beams in three sectors. The four inter-satellite cross-links on each satellite operate at 10 megabits per second. Optical links could have supported a much greater bandwidth and a more aggressive growth path, but microwave cross-links were chosen because their bandwidth was more than sufficient for the desired system. Nevertheless, a parallel optical crosslink option was carried through a critical design review, and ended when the microwave crosslinks were shown to support the size, weight and power requirements allocated within the individual satellite's budget. Iridium Satellite LLC has stated that their second-generation satellites would also use microwave, not optical, inter-satellite communications links. Such cross-links are unique in the satellite telephone industry, as other providers do not relay data between satellites. Global Star and Inmarsat both use a transponder without cross-links. The original design as envisioned in the 1960s was that of a completely static, dumb satellite, with a set of control messages and time triggers for an entire orbit that would be uploaded as the satellite passed over the poles. It was found that this design did not have enough bandwidth in the space-based backhaul to upload each satellite quickly and reliably over the poles. Moreover, fixed, static scheduling would have left more than 90% of the satellite links idle at all times. Therefore, the design was scrapped in favor of a design that performed dynamic control of routing and channel selection late in the project, resulting in a one-year delay in system delivery. Each satellite can support up to 1,100 concurrent phone calls at 2,400 bits per second, and weighs about 1,500 pounds. The Iridium system presently operates within a 1,618.85 to 1,626.5 MHz band adjacent 
to the 1610.6-1613.8 MHz radio astronomy service band. The configuration of the satellite concept was designated as triangular fixed, 80-inch main mission antenna, lightweight. The packaging design of the spacecraft was managed by Lockheed Bus Spacecraft Team. It was the first commercial satellite bus designed at the Sunnyvale Space Systems Division in California. The TF-80L configuration was considered a non-conventional, innovative approach to developing a satellite design that could be assembled and tested in five days. The TF-80L design configuration was also instrumental in simultaneously solving fundamental design problems involving optimization of the communications payload thermal environment and RF main mission antenna performance, while achieving the highest payload fairing packaging for each of the three main launch vehicle providers. The first spacecraft mock-up of this design was built in a garage workshop in Santa Clara, California for the bus ped slash a proof of concept model. This first prototype paved the way for the design and construction of the first engineering models. This design was the basis of the largest constellation of satellites deployed in low Earth orbit. After 10 years of successful on-orbit performance, the Iridium team celebrated the equivalent of 1,000 cumulative years of on-orbit performance in 2008. One of the engineering Iridium satellite models was placed on permanent exhibit in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. In orbit spares. Spare satellites are usually held in a 414 mile storage orbit. These can be boosted to the correct altitude and put into service in case of a satellite failure. After the Iridium company emerged from bankruptcy, the new owners decided to launch seven new spares, which would have ensured two spare satellites were available in each plane. Not every plane had a spare satellite. However, the satellites can be moved to a different plane if required. A move can take several weeks and consumes fuel which will shorten the satellite's expected service life. Significant orbital plane changes are normally very fuel-intensive, but orbital perturbations aid the process. The Earth's equatorial bulge causes the orbital right ascension of the ascending node to process, at a rate that depends mainly on the period and inclination. The Iridium satellites have an inclination of 86.4 degrees which places every satellite in a prograde inclination a band service of up to 8 megabits per second to fixed slash transportable terminals. The next generation terminals and service are expected to be commercially available by the end of 2018. However, Iridium's proposed use of its next generation satellites has raised concerns the service will harmfully interfere with GPS devices. The satellites will incorporate a secondary payload for Aeron incorporated a space qualified ad speed data receiver. This is for use by air traffic control and via flight aware for use by airlines. A tertiary payload on 58 satellites is a marine AIS ship tracker receiver. Iridium can also be used to provide a data link to other satellites in space, enabling command and control of other space assets regardless of the position of ground stations and gateways. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?